Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take what we learned about stoichiometry and we are going to be able to determine percent yield. And what this means is that when you guys are back in the lab, you're going to be able to produce a certain amount of stuff. Well, is that what you really should get? Or maybe there were some mistakes that happened and you weren't able to really produce all of your product. So what we want to look at is the percent yield. How much of that? How efficient were you? So whenever we perform stoichiometry, which is what we talked about yesterday, if we start with a certain amount of something, we can predict our theoretical yield. We can do that through calculations. It's the amount of the substance that you should get. Again, all experiments don't always work out perfectly um, due to human error, all sorts of other reasons as well. And you might not get as much of that product as you should according to your calculations. So um, what you actually get, we call that the actual yield. So we're really looking at two things. We're looking at theoretical yield and we're looking at the actual yield, what you actually get back in the lab. And when we compare these two, we can get something known as percent yield. It's always going to be actual divided by theoretical and then you multiply it times 100 to get your percent. Just like you would think, your actual would be less either equal to or less than your theoretical yield. You should not be able to get produce more than you can um, theoretically produce. Okay, so again, just to reiterate what we said, theoretical yield, that's the maximum amount of product that can be made. How do we figure that out? We calculate it. So just like we did with stoichiometry, if you were given a reaction, you said, okay, we start with this many grams of A, and in lab, you produce this many grams of B. This is your actual. In order to get your percent yield, you need to go ahead and figure out your theoretical. So that's going to be the big issue here. Okay, and so um, since you're given your actual, you are going to be calculating your theoretical, then you're going to compare those two in a percent yield problem. Okay, so actual yield, this is you guys back in lab, this is what you actually get. If we're talking about just doing some problems um, as part of homework or on a quiz or a test, we're not going to throw you back in lab, so that value would have to be given to you. The hard part about this is, though, that a lot of people can't identify that very easily from their givens, their problems, so that's what we'll work on here in some examples. So as you go through this, remember that in stoichiometry problems, you always calculate the theoretical yield. You will always have to calculate that. So your actual will be given most likely and you will have to calculate your theoretical yield. There's also a chance that it will give you your percent yield and ask you to calculate your actual yield. Okay, so first example that we have. Just like what we talked about yesterday in stoichiometry, we're always going to have to start with a balanced chemical reaction. So when I look at this, it says barium chloride is added to excess sodium sulfate. So I've got some barium chloride, and I've got some sodium sulfate. So even if it doesn't tell me what's produced, I know how to predict products here, and I can say that it's going to be barium sulfate and sodium chloride. Of course, I have to balance this to be able to get my coefficients in there and it looks like we just need that, then strongly recommended is that you write this information underneath your reaction. So we're starting with 34.5 grams of barium chloride and added to plenty of this, so we know we're not going to run out of that. And the reaction goes to completion. Then it's found that 12.56 grams of barium sulfate, 12.56, grams of barium sulfate was formed. We're looking for the percent yield. What you guys need to be able to figure out from this is when this value is given, this is the actual yield. That's you back in lab and that's what you are actually able to produce. So now based on this, we need to figure out the mass of our theoretical yield. So that's what we're doing with this problem. So we are going to start with 34 0.5 grams of barium chloride. Think about your mole map, what we talked about yesterday. You don't want it as grams of barium chloride. You want to go to moles of barium chloride. 
you know, one mole of any substance is equal to its weight in grams. So we add that up really quickly and get 208.23, I think it is. So now we've got our answer as moles of barium chloride. Yeah, that we don't care about this stuff anymore. We want to get rid of moles of barium chloride. Instead, we want to find out information about our moles of barium sulfate. So this is when we look at our balanced chemical equation. It happens to be a one-to-one -one ratio. But this step right here is that mole ratio step when you go from one substance to another. So now we've got it as moles of barium sulfate. Whatever our given is, um, as far as our actual yield, here it happens to be grams. That's what I need to calculate my theoretical yield in. It needs to be in grams as well. So I'm going to get my grams of barium sulfate and get rid of my moles of barium sulfate. So one mole has 233.39 grams. So now everything cancels except the grams of barium sulfate. And just a quick reminder, what we did was we calculated our theoretical yield. So in theory, that's what we should be able to produce. And we plug this into our calculators, and we get 38.7 grams of barium sulfate. So that is our theoretical yield. We have just solved for this value right here. So now we know what to do. We know that percent yield is just going to be actual divided by theoretical, and then you multiply it times 100. So that's going to be your actual yield of 12.56 divided by your theoretical that we just calculated, and that's uh, 38.7, and these are grams, I'm going to scratch that out, times 100. And when we do this, we get 32.5% was our yield. Not a very good yield, but that was our percent yield for this uh, problem here. Notice that in your problem, you're given this value and this value. Here we have three sig figs, so that's what I reported my final answer to. Okay, another example. In this case, this is where... Um, now we've got another formula that's going to have to come back to us. Let's see if you guys remember it. It's going to be for molarity. But we start by reading through here that we have silver nitrate added to sodium chloride. Silver nitrate plus sodium chloride. And this is going to yield silver chloride plus sodium nitrate. And these are all plus ones, minus ones, so everything is balanced. So now I'm going to write my information underneath because that really keeps me focused. Remember, when, once I wrote that stuff underneath, I never had to look at this again. told me everything I needed to know right there in my chemical reaction. So that's what we're going to do here again. We know we're starting off with 34.6 milliliters of 0 0.525 molar silver nitrate. We also know that 1.892 grams of silver chloride um, is obtained. So when you ask yourself what value is that, you should be answering with the actual value. So what you guys are going to need to do in order to figure out the percent yield, and remember your percent yield is always going to be for the substance that you have an actual yield for. It's not going to be for sodium nitrate. It's not going to be for something that's a reactant. It's going to be the substance that you have an actual yield for. And again, you're going to have to look for it in the same units. If I have it in grams, I'm going to want to know my actual yield, um, my theoretical yield in grams. So this is what we need to solve for first. Okay, so um, if you remember the formula for molarity, It'll probably help you out a little bit because remember that we never really want to have the big capital M in our dimensional analysis because nothing will ever cancel. Instead, we want it as moles per liter. So when we start with this, I see that I'm given 0.525 molar. Okay, so um, sorry, I keep getting interrupted here. 
my train of thought. Um, I think we said that we've got molarity, which is we're not going to put it as a big capital M. Instead, we're going to say moles per liter. And then we've also got milliliters, which we can easily uh, convert to liters. I wouldn't necessarily write this all underneath like I'm doing. I would probably just plug this into my problem, but I'm just showing you how this works real quickly. So at this point, you guys are probably adept enough at this that you could just move your decimal three places to the left. If you don't feel comfortable with that, then in dimensional analysis, you should be throwing in there that one liter equals a thousand milliliters. Okay, so when given the option, two units or one unit, you start with the one unit. So 0 0.0346 liters, and this is for silver nitrate. We know we don't want it in liters. We want our liters to cancel out, and we want to get to moles. And again, this is still going to be for silver nitrate. So we know that we have 34 point, now I'm grabbing the wrong number. We know that we have 0 0.525 moles for every one liter. Okay, so now our next step, we've get rid of our liters. We've got it as moles of silver nitrate. We don't want it as moles of silver nitrate. Remember that our goal is to come over here and find out information about our silver chloride. So if we can look at our balanced chemical equation and make that jump, then, um, then we're there. So again, we look at our balanced equation. One to one is what we see. That's that mole ratio step. So now we've got it as moles of silver chloride. That is not what we want. We want to figure out grams. So we need to go to grams of silver chloride. One mole is equal to 143. 0.22 grams. So now we've got it as grams of silver chloride. We pl plug it into our calculators and magically get the answer of 2.60 grams of silver chloride. Um, again, three sig figs, three sig figs. My answer here is in three sig figs. We are not done because it asked for percent yield. So think to yourself, what did you just calculate? And the answer is you calculated the theoretical yield. So in theory, if you start with this amount of silver nitrate, you should be able to get this amount of your silver chloride. Ah, but in actuality, you only got that much because some's left in the beaker. You didn't, you know, some's on the uh, stir rod, all sorts of different things, reasons that you didn't get a 100% yield. So now to calculate this, we say our percent yield is equal to actual divided by theoretical times 100. So in this case, it is going to be our actual of 1.892, and this is in grams, divided by 2.60 grams. They cancel out because we purposely made these be the same unit. We solved for the same thing. Then we multiply times 100. And in this case, we end up getting 72.8% yield, a little bit better than our last one. So that is a percent yield problem. Next video will be energy cups.